Thanks for joining me again. This is Danny Cardwell from thoughtwrestler.blogspot.com. I want to talk about dogmatism today. All of us have beliefs that govern the way we interact with people, that govern the way we try to live our life. And in our interactions with people, we have the misfortune of coming across people who may believe or think differently than we do. And the civility in which we handle these situations can be tied directly to how strong we are in our dogma and if our dogma hasn't made the slip into dogmatism in which we view our conclusions or our realities about life as being the ultimate truth or ultimate reality that is suffice for everyone. Uh, personally, I like to think that the interrogation I've put myself through has been rigorous enough and that some of the beliefs that I hold, I've questioned them enough and that I've been able to arrive at a certain amount of truth that works for me. But I'm not crazy enough to believe that I've found eternal truth or a truth that's universal for everyone. In certain uh, instances, whether it be mathematical or practical science related, you know, there's a certain set of propositions that we can make, you can adduce evidence to support those propositions or claims, and you can prove it. But often at the metaphysical level when it comes to beliefs, truth, values, those things, they aren't as easily measured and the truth behind them is something that is almost uh, determined by where you stand. It's not a universal. So looking at the world through the eyes of a 13-year-old from Central America, you're going to get a different view from looking at the world through the eyes of a well-off financial manager in Brooklyn. I mean, it's just two different world views. And yet, inside of their belief system, their beliefs have been founded by the process that they've gone through. And inside of our lives, we all have processes that we've gone through. We have experiences that have shaped us. And we've seen things that have helped us form our world view. But the key is not to allow our world view to override the universal truth of life. And that universal truth is something that, although none of us will ever get to, it leaves room for further study. It leaves room for further investigation. There are things in this life that are true depending on where you sit or where you stand. The old axiom, 5 plus 4 is 9 and 6 plus 3 is 9. You can start in two different places and get to the same answer. Our faith, our political beliefs, those things are structured around our experiences and they're structured around our contextual frame of reference. So again, what we think, what we believe, and what we say and the way we treat other people, all those things are layered upon experiences, layered upon beliefs. And our task should be to respect and understand that the beliefs of others while holding on to ours. But what happens is though we have people that are so invested in their beliefs that they will not even consider information that's contrary to their beliefs. They won't consider a source that believes something different than them. And even if proven wrong about a certain uh, aspect of their beliefs, they'll go into a defensive shell in which their whole world view has been challenged and they naturally want to come out swinging. Uh, in our current times we have political and news organizations that are you know dedicated to the misinformation of the citizenry and when you have those structures in place it's up to the individual to do the rigorous work of investigation of challenging your beliefs and trying to find as close as you can a truth that works for you. I've described myself as a Christian metaphysician and for me what that means is that I have taken upon myself the task of defining for myself the world and my place in this world in a way that's not universal. I understand that I'll come to conclusions about my faith that aren't typical for other people. Inside of my church I have beliefs that slightly differ from doctrines of the church that slightly differ from that of the secular world. And with that said, I try to go about my day in a way that 
allows me to affirm the humanity of everyone I deal with. But I don't put my faith or my relief or my beliefs secondary to anyone else's. I don't accept the premise that a person of faith has to be somehow intellectually inferior to a secular progressive who maybe believes more in uh, science or has no religious beliefs. And yet, I don't feel I'm morally superior to someone who has no conscious commitment uh, to God talk. Someone of any faith has the ability to be humane and to teach a person, to treat a person right, to teach people, to love people, and to be willing to learn from people. So no faith has a monopoly on morality, and no commitment to not having a faith has any morality, has any uh, monopoly on intellectual property. So with all that said, I would just challenge the people that support this blog to leave yourself open to the idea that, you know, maybe your worldview isn't perfect, that maybe there's another way of looking at things. And even inside of myself, there are views that I've had that, you know, I had to look at them, investigate them, and then I realized that, you know, I had to give them up. There are views that I had that have grown because of that process. And so that's what I encourage all of you to do. Thanks for your time. Continue to support the blog. Peace.